Hello everybody, Dave from Mary Arachnids. <clears throat> We're going to do a rehouse. I don't do these very often online. Well, not online, I should say on YouTube. I don't like to film them because I like to concentrate on what I'm doing. But this spider here isn't so bad. I'm not overly concerned about her uh, taking off on me. Watch, this will be the one that does. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so this is a Brachypelma Baumgartenii female. This is the 8 by 8 by 8 Exoterra enclosure. Uh, my brother had her in. We're going to move her to a 7 quart um, Sterilite container. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. The reason I want to move her... Um, she doesn't have enough dirt in here in this in this actual enclosure. It should be higher up. Um, she likes to climb. This is a Brachypelma out of all of mine. All the brachypelmas that I own, this one and my male classy are climbers, and they are driving me insane. Um, this still has the screen mesh, as you can hear up top. Uh, part of my staying at home this uh, couple weeks, I'm going to try and get some of these screen meshes replaced with uh, plastic or acrylic. Um, I'm just going to do them myself. It doesn't seem all that difficult. We just super glue them or uh, hot glue the plastic to where the screening was before. And it'll give them a safer area to climb if, they, if the trances that I do decide to put in here are going to climb. Now, <clears throat> the question is, what do I put in an 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight enclosure um, that is okay to climb? If it, if it has to, but I could get deep enough substrate and add some ground clutter and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is in this enclosure, we're going to move my Harpactera Marxi uh, because she will stay relatively small. So she'll be able to stay in this enclosure the whole entire time. She can web the place up like crazy. Um, I won't need to use the front door. We'll be able to just take the top off when I need to feed her. We can film through the front door. I think it's going to be a good setup for her. But I also have another one of these. And I'm not positive who I want to put in it yet. I've been thinking about, uh, there's a bunch of different tarantulas I'd like to put in there, but I just don't know exactly what the right one is yet. So we'll, we'll make up our mind on that at another time. So what I want to do is um, try and get this one out. So I'm going to pause you here and we're going to get the door open, the top off, and I'll show you generally what I do when I transfer uh, tarantulas. Um, I won't use my normal method. And my normal method is, the enclosure is enclosed with the top cut off and I use a piece of acrylic or pexiglass that has holes drilled in the top of it all the way all over it so that I could use a I use these these wooden skewers you could buy these at Walmart or probably any grocery store um, I use those to manipulate the spider into generally this vial uh, depending on what size the tarantula are. this is a 50 dram you can see I have holes drilled in the back, and there's some holes up top. These are just air holes. But uh, once I get the spider in here, then I can close it, move it into the next enclosure, and then I can use these holes to prompt the spider back out. This way it limits my um, exposure to the animal and the animal's exposure to me. Um, Baumgartenis are rather placid. So far, the two that I have are very placid. Um, I haven't seen them kick hairs, but I'm not guaranteeing you that she's not going to when we do this rehouse. So, uh, you know, without further ado, let's let's see what we got going on. Okay, so I decided to leave the front door open here. Or closed, I mean, not open. I was going to keep it open so that it was easier to film. But this will allow me that extra barrier to get her into this. So what I generally do is just put the vial in. And then we'll just kind of kind of coax her. Sometimes Brachypelma just don't like to move. You can see now she's being kind of quick. Go right in there, dear. There you go. Okay, so now she's in the vial. Just put the top on. And voila. Very minimal exposure to the tarantula. The tarantula has a very minimal exposure to me. Now we'll just take this enclosure and move it, and there she is right there. <clears throat> I don't know which ones I like better. These ones are the Bamy. Now they're pretty pretty similar. Um, just simple facts. These, I, I got to watch 
Bugs and Stuff's video again on his, I just watched him the other day, the Bracky Palma videos. I can't remember if the Baumgartenia are north of the Rio Balsas or south of the Rio Balsas, but whichever side of the Rio Balsas River they are, Bamie's on the other side. So there's that natural border. I do believe these are on the north side and Bamie are on the south side, but I'm probably wrong. So now we'll get the camera reset up and I will get her into her new enclosure. Uh, this will be something she'll be able to stay in for some time. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable with these 7 liters. She'll have a hide, she'll have a water dish, and plenty of room to move around. Um, I can tell you honestly that I have not found many of my Brachypoma species that like to dig. It seems in captivity, if they are secure, uh, they will just hang out. They, they don't need to dig down to get out of heat. They don't need to dig down to get away from predators. So I think they feel more secure without that. Um, I'm not saying that Brachypelma won't dig, because some will. Uh, my, my big Brachypelma um, Hamori female, she has a burrow, which she'll escape to when she's when, I, when I'm messing around in there. Uh, trying to get her water dish out to clean or whatever it is. She'll go down there, but she'll come right back out. And once the, the disruption is over, she'll hang right back out where she normally is. Uh, the Brachypelma class, he also has a burrow that he likes to go in. But he likes to stay on the side of his enclosure a lot. So, um, yeah, those are the only two I think that I have out of the Braggy Pelmas that actually have, have really burrowed. So, let's uh, let's get this one in, the, in its new enclosure. Okay, so here's the new setup. Uh, this is a mixture of Cocoa Core and uh, it's the uh, Zoomed, I believe, right? Zoomed. Um, jungle mix so it's a little bit more chunky i like the texture of this but i want to mix it more to make these those bags last longer because they do you know they're eight quart they i go through them pretty quickly so i bought a big um big thing of peat moss um sphagnum peat moss it's uh i can't remember how many cubic feet three cubic feet or something like that and my next on the list is going to be a bag of uh, topsoil. I have vermiculite. I have uh, <clears throat> Spanish moss. I have all kinds of stuff to make mixtures that I'm going to work with here over the course of the next handful of weeks on some different spiders. See how things work out. So without further ado, let's try and I'll try and show you exactly what we do. Um, I got to be quick because she may want to just climb right back up the side. So normally what I do is, uh, let me pause you and, I, and I'll get it. It'll be easier that way. So as you see, <clears throat> I've made a handful of different sizes of these. And they're just feet, flat, piece, blah, 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 flat pieces of acrylic. Um, I think these are about quarter inch thick. There's other thicknesses that I have, eighth inch, um, that are, that are, some of them are longer. They're not so wide like this one. Actually, the one I would generally use on something like this is actually a little bit longer and cut this part wouldn't be hanging over but what i do as i'll show you <clears throat> is we come in through the side here and we'll just work with her through the hole of the enclosure or the vial and this will get her to come out into her new home now you can see that she's she's wanting to, to take off right away um, and she's going to try and climb out this side here that's not covered. Yep. And get back in there. Get back in there. Okay, so I just moved the plastic over so she couldn't get out. <clears throat> so what I'll do, if you can see, is because this isn't so long, she's on this side. So we'll slide the plastic over and I'll just grab the vial. No harm, no foul. I'm not bothering her at all. She had a nice easy transfer into her enclosure. She has a nice coconut hide there to hide in now. She has places that she could just sit if she wants to. And she has been the, the, the eliminating, I eliminated her uh, ease and ability to climb uh, in the other enclosure. Um, I feel more secure putting like a baboon species in there because they do web or a small arboreal. Um, I just don't like the thought of putting an arboreal in an eight by eight by eight square cube. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of wasted space for our arboreals. I like the, uh, you know, especially the smaller ones that I would put in there, which would be the only one that I would really 
have available right now to put in there would be my Formingo Keyless species Rufus, but I have something else that I want to put her in. So <clears throat> there's nothing really that I have to put in there for that moment. So the Marxie is going to go in one, and then we're not, not really quite sure what we're going to do with the other one, but I do have another one. So now that she's sitting and stable and not moving, we'll get a better look at her. And again, this light here is not as good as some of my other lighting. So let me try something. Maybe this will give us a better look at her. And excuse me for my breathing. My asthma has been bugging me the last handful of days. You can see a little bit more of her coloration there. Not exactly a ton. Let's see if we can zoom in a little. Oh, we're turning the light down. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to zoom. Well, there she is. A female Brachypelma Um I think these are called the Mexican Orange Beauties, I believe. I'm not 100% positive. But you can't go wrong with any of these red leg tarantulas at all. Uh, I mean, you really can't. And we'll show those again when I do the next part of my tour video. Uh, I wanted to get her moved. And I also have, I'll show you, a male baby that is in a critter keeper. And I'm not real fond of the critter keeper of that size. Um, for that spider, anyway. I'd rather see it in something a little bit lower like this. Um, so we'll figure out what, what I want to do with him. And he's a little bit more... Babies are a little bit more skittish and a lot more readily flickable. They, they like to flick a lot quicker. They, it's like their trigger for flicking hairs is, is very, very small. So, there you go. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on the Baumgartani, please feel free to, to shoot me a line. Um, I still haven't completely figured out how to tell them apart uh, by pictures online. Unless they are side by side, it seems to be a little bit easier. You can tell... Um, it has something to do with the areas on their femurs, uh, coloration at the very, very part, uh, I think it's called the coxa, where the legs attach to the carapace. I think with Bamey, there's a, there's a line, there's a little black and then a line and then a little, and then black starts to go down the femur. <clears throat> with Baumgartenny, there isn't any, uh, you can see it's completely colored. <clears throat> so we'll go over that in the Brachypalma video. Maybe I'll be able to get the two species kind of side by side and we could take a look and maybe get some variations on uh, things that I know to look for again, but I'm not I'm not really well versed in, in these at all, the Baumgartenny versus the Bamey. Even though I have two of each, I have two females of the of these Baumgartennies and a male and a female of the Bamey. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, goodness for you know, hit that subscribe button. Um <clears throat> There's so many people that watch my videos, but only 18% of the people that, are, that watch my videos are subscribed to my, my channel. So, you know, if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing out there, uh, maybe the light even up higher is even better, huh? Yeah, please, please hit the subscribe button and you can hit the bell so that you know that new videos are coming out. Um, I got a bunch of, bunch of ideas to do. Uh, I'm going to show you my favorite spider in my collection. That'll be a video that we do soon. It's just a matter of me being able to get that little bugger out of there so that it's visible. It is a very, very shy and skittish species. Um, especially that particular spider. This one here is, it's out every night. But when I put the light on top of it to try and turn, you know, to get a picture of it, the minute I grab my camera, it takes off every single time. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get some, some shots of that one. And uh, we have some more rehousings to do bunches of them so maybe we could do some more of these this is really the i don't do these often like i said because i like to concentrate and i don't have any i don't have a person that's holding a camera for me so i have to do the camera work i have to you know have, have the microphone in a place where it's out of my way but still able for you guys to hear it and do all the work myself if i had somebody that could film for me uh i could do a lot more things like this um you know, if you look at like Tom Rand's videos, his, his wife, Billy, does most of his uh, videography work. She's the one that's holding the camera. So it's a lot easier for him to work because he's got two hands. He can move freely and she's doing all the filming. Um, my wife doesn't want to have anything to do with this stuff. So I'm <clears throat> kind of out of luck there. But uh, well, we're going to move a little bit. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this and stay tuned for the next one. And in the meantime, happy keeping. <laughs>